Texas A&M is a much better team this year because they have three impact transfers all in the starting lineup. Well, when you're going to rebuild a program, you start with a point guard, then you go with a post, and you might as well get the most dynamic player in the portal as well. And it's been offense, offense, offense for the Aggies. Opening tip controlled by the Aggies. We are underway here at Reed Arena, and they look inside right away for Lauren Ware, who spins it up for the game's first two points. Here's Sarah Puckett. Tough shot for her, but Striplin underneath went for the putback, and she was fouled. We welcome those of you who watched Auburn knock off LSU, ending the Tigers' 16-game winning streak, the longest in Division I. Jemiah Mingo Young clutch at the free throw line in the final 10 seconds. Auburn with a stunner, 67-62. Eric Freed, Christy thomas Scuddy here at Texas A&M. Just the opening seconds between the Aggies and the Lady Vols. Please take a Look at the starting five for Texas A&M. 13 wins on the season. They had nine all of last year. Three impact transfers in the starting five, including Adia Rogers. Fifth in Division One in assist to turnover ratio. Janiah Barker, outstanding freshman last year. She's their leading scorer again this year. Here is Barker from the outside. In and out for three. Then the rebound for Jasmine Powell. Powell, 13 assists in the last two games. Couple of wins for Tennessee. Jewel Spear, back-to-back 20-point games. Sarah Puckett had 20 in the win against Florida last time out. And Rakia Jackson can create her shot anytime she wants. And Eric, the big thing today to watch in this game is pace of play. Tennessee wants to get up and down. AM wants to try to slow them down. Flip of the script, though. Tennessee extending into the full court pressure. This is a day in the SEC of flipping scripts. Missouri handing Vandy their first conference loss in Auburn, stunning LSU. And now Texas A&M taking on a Tennessee team undefeated in the SEC, but Jewel Spear rattles in a three, shooting 58% from the floor in SEC play so far. Rodgers is fouled. She'll shoot two. Eighth game of the season, missed eight with a leg injury. Ended up losing it. 87-70 was the final. Was then the number one scoring defense. Turnover by Tennessee. They do have trouble taking care of the basketball. And here is Sahara Jones in transition. And that was one thing Joni Taylor told us that she said we need to improve on is our fouling. And SEC play, Eric, they are averaging 17 fouls, much higher than their non-conference average. Good adjustment by Powell. Switched back to the right hand and got the two. Jones, she has struggled from outside the three-point line, so she'll take it to the basket for two. Tennessee's eighth in Division I in defensive rebounds a game, but we've already seen them give up a handful of offensive rebounds to AM. One and done for Tennessee that trip. Kaya Wynn is into the game, knocked away by Key, and then Jillian Hollingshed. I asked Kelly Harper, knowing how good a has been on the glass, what's, what was the message? She said, well, we practiced yesterday, and that was what we really focused on was rebounding. Bowles can't hit from outside. Good hard work by Sahar. They don't have a rhythm yet on the offensive end. Koulibaly on the switch. You know Jackson's going to draw a lot of defensive attention. It was Jones and Koulibaly working together to deny her that trip. Koulibaly to where? Outside. Can Jones get it from outside? Yes. Rodgers with the steal. Turnover number three for the Lady Vols. Rodgers on the run for two. That screen on the ball. And so Tennessee's not able to take advantage. The only way to do that is to hit the roller. Hollingshed on the turnaround after getting the offensive rebound. You've got to hold that box out and pursue rebounds. Barker on the fadeaway. Cold start for her. Now 0 for 4 from the field. Here comes Tennessee. Powell. Powell to Key cutting down the lane for two. The players crashing in there. you got to be sound in your fundamentals of the box outs. Bowles launches and knocks down a three. Didn't score against LSU, was 0 for 5 from the field, but knocks down a 3 there to put A&M back in front by 6. Near turnover by the Lady Vols. They have got to see the defense before making passes. Final minute of the first. We're seeing a lot of screen on the ball by the Aggies because they know Tamari Key's not coming out of the paint. Rodgers too strong, the rebound for Darby. Jasmine Powell will slow things down and Tennessee will hold for 1.
Down the three. Powell from deep. Barker's got the rebound, and that will do it. Transfer portal. All these four transfers contact her. She gets one of the best point guards. She gets one of the best posts and one of the most dynamic playmakers in Aisha Koulibaly. What does this mean? It is a roster that now accounts for almost 50% of the points to this point in the season for the Aggies. Kendall Hunter, another transfer from Texas, but she's out with an Achilles injury, has not played for Texas A&M. Second quarter is underway. Spear trying to get free. Down to four on the shot clock. Striplin has to launch. And Barker's got the rebound. Back out to Green. Again, the shot clock winding down. Hilton is going to have to make something happen. Finds an opening a little too strong. And Jackson's got it for Tennessee. Jackson tries to get downhill, has Puckett trying to clear some space out for, and a rebound for Barker. Three on one back the other way for AM. Where from Barker? An example of Barker's athleticism that she is able to get by the defender and set up her post without charging into that defender. So far, it feels like the story is that Texas A&M defense gave up 87 LSU last game, but they're locked in right now, making it very difficult for Jackson, who has a mismatch on the inside this trip and scores. Great job to find Jackson off that mismatch. Barker, ice cold so far, 0 for 6 from the field. Tennessee ball. Jackson trying to post. Not double team, triple team that time mm-hmm. for Rakia Jackson on the block. Powell got a half step on Bowles. Just take what the defense gives you. It's what I said a moment ago. She can create her shot anytime she wants. That's how gifted she is. But we're seeing it at SEC. Her stats have dropped significantly, only averaging eight points a game after throughout the non-conference was up to almost 13. Held to six last time against LSU. Here's Koulibaly back the other way for the Aggies for two. First points for Koulibaly after she missed her first three field goals. Eric, Tennessee with six turnovers, and they've got Rakia Jackson wide open on the other end. And she was down there forever, and Texas A&M lost track of her. Tennessee took a while to find her, but Jackson with the basket for the two. But what I was going to say, Tennessee with six turnovers, three of those are because they're not reading the defense. They're not seeing the maroon, and they're just making passes to their teammates in orange. Koulibaly ducks under, and the foul. We, Christy and I, we have a beignet place. We've got a lunch place. we got a pregame. All effort by Jones, but they can get a better shot. Overall for Texas A&M, do you think she's happy with the shot selection right now in this game against The delivery of the shots that I'm cr- criticizing Barker about. But I think she, I'm not Joni Taylor, but I think she's probably happy because the defense has been there most importantly for the Aggies. So there is Janiah Barker. On the bench at the moment for Texas A&M, over seven from the field. She does have six rebounds, but has not scored. Leading score for this team at just over 12 points a game. Aggie's doing such a great job on those diagonal back screens for the bigs to come in to jam it up. Striplin tried to reverse it, couldn't get it, and Ware's got the rebound. Jones on the drive. Little too strong. Koulibaly kept it alive and a second chance here. And the freshman into the game, Sole Williams, not shy. Williams, the freshman from Cincinnati, 31% from outside the three point line on the season. Here's Rogers with the rebound, and AM trying to add to their lead again. Rogers. Little hesitation. Think she'd lull Tess Darby to sleep. Big where is and how much space she's taking away. Jackson couldn't finish. Back the other way, Williams. The entry pass wide open, and once again. So what's happened in the past is now in the present as well. Last three games, down by 10 or more in the second quarter. And guess what? They're down by 10 in the second quarter against Texas A&M here on a Sunday afternoon. Well, the one player who has stepped up, and here we go with a turnover, light ball turnover. Koulibaly off to Rogers out of the Tennessee timeout. 
It's another AM layup. Spears been cold so far, one for five from the field. Hollingshed. Shot clock getting skinny here. It's now down to five. Powell has to try a step back three. No. Texas AM is going to push. Williams to Kulabale for two. It's a 14 point game at halftime. AM on top of Tennessee. Three steals leading the scores for the Aggies. She's quick, she's explosive, she anticipates, and she's been offense for the Aggies. Texas A&M held Tennessee to 32% shooting from the field in the first half. First possession of the third quarter belongs to A&M. Ware off the mark from outside, and here comes Spear. Puckett didn't score in the first half. Looks for her points early. Looks for the loose ball and tracks it down. Now Spear, one for five shooting in the first half. That's a good start for her. Jewel Spear now with six. Rogers on the push. Up to where? Back outside, Rogers looks down for the line and launches a three. She tried to power it up, knew she couldn't get the shot off, so finds Rogers on the three. Stripling, tough shot, but makes it over where? Where had the mismatch in transition, and the Aggies missed her. Barker off the mark again, 0 for 8 from the field. Spear back out top, Jackson. Ware, good recovery to get a hand on it. Barker knocked it off of Jackson, but not out of play. Puckett is fouled, and she'll go to the line. I looked it up, temperature in the low to mid-80s today in Melbourne. I'm, I'm it was definitely not low to mid -80s. Come this far south, you are expecting T-shirt and shorts weather. And there's still a lot of people around here who still wear T-shirts and shorts, even when it's 30 degrees outside. Bowls, no. A&M with that sideline, free th uh, after the free throw, sideline break, just couldn't get it to go down. And Eric, that last foul was on Lauren Ware. Something to watch here, her third of the game. Stripling, little jump hook, can't get it. Ware stays on the floor with the three. Rodgers weaving through traffic, pulls up at the free throw line. Spear, Striplin will try a deep three. No. Rodgers grimacing as she pushes it up the court, hands it off to Ware, and it's a blocking foul, which is a moment. Act like I didn't see her as well as she's playing right now. That's why she's still in coaching in here. Robert Mosley. He holds on to it for the Lady Vols. Well, another example where they're looking at their teammates and not seeing the defense win not a natural point guard due to that injury to Destiny Wells. Hollingshed inside. And Eric, you see it. The Vols score, and immediately Texas A&M is pushing tempo. This is almost a flip of the script because the Aggies have been more up-paced offensively than the Lady Vols have been so far. Kulabali on the feed from Green. Count it. Chance for a three-point play for Texas A&M when we come back. Tara Vanderveer, her bid to match Coach K, put on hold by a very good Colorado team. And UCLA is struggling right now, no surprise, against USC. I mean, no surprise whatsoever. USC, one of the great stories in the Pac-12 right now. Their resurgence. Oh, good job by Barker. Kept it alive and a second chance here for Texas A&M. Yeah, Buffs beat Stanford today 71-59, so Tara will try to match Coach K Friday when Stanford hosts Oregon. Good feed. Barker's got her first field goal of the game. Spear will throw up a three. No good. Ware with the rebound. Mentioned the ball getting stuck, and you just mentioned a name a couple of minutes ago that we should talk about a little bit more, Destiny Wells, who was the transfer from Belmont over to Tennessee. Her season done due to a knee injury, losing a playmaker like that, a facilitator as well, costly for Tennessee. Absolutely, and the unfortunate thing for the Lady Vols is Rakia Jackson was just coming back. Numbers the other way. Spear knocks down the three and is fouled. This could be it for Tennessee. They can't finish the four-point play, but they're not finished on this end of the floor yet. Striplin went on the deck, and now three on one the other way for Texas A&M. Jones, beautiful fake. 
Sahara Jones now up to 11 points for the Aggies. Great job of reading the defense there and taking it up to finish. Jones has matched her season high. Powell answers. A&M's done a great job against this extended 2-3 matchup of Tennessee. Jones, how about it? And a foul is called on Sarah Puckett. On Puckett. Parker did a good job of some acting there to make sure the officials saw it. But Eric, hats off to Sahara Jones. She's been aggressive off the bounce, realizes she's a little challenged height-wise, so uses the backward <laughs> with a reverse. And this is the play of the half for me. Sahara Jones with a little ball fake, makes Tess Darby jump to the left side and then takes it smoothly to the right. Kulabali is bumped by Striplin. And it'll be two free throws. ESPN Plus and our mega cast coverage. Six Eastern on ESPN. Final 13 seconds of the quarter. Spear with five. Spear one on one. Spear can't get it. Ware's got the rebound and that will do it. 54-36 as we get ready for the fourth quarter here in Aggie Land. Eric Free, Christy Samascotti with you. A huge deficit for Tennessee. Winners of six straight, 3-0 in the SEC in the first possession of the fourth quarter is a Tennessee turnover. I give credit to a and That's what I'm going to say about that possession. But I, I've said this a couple times in this game. Tennessee has got to learn to read the defense before they make a pass. They're looking at their teammates, and this is where A&M's been able to be aggressive and force a number of turnovers and get the steal. You were almost speechless there. A Texas A&M team that's outstanding defensively. Win with the left hand, no. That three is no good. Rodgers kept it alive for Texas A&M. Here's Key. Wynn's going to try again and hit it. Great job and great resiliency by the Lady Vols there to stay with that. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to have to create some second chance opportunities. Jones. Another good move on the inside by Sahara Jones. She's got 15. Career high is 18, by the way. Sahara Jones so long with that last step. No, she's got the speed advantage, but allows Puckett to go for the head fake. Comes back through with the counter for the finish. Puckett for three. Rogers. Barker. Well, she, she wasn't call. almost. She was <laughs> at half court, and Roy Gobain went over there to remind her where the the line for the coaches to stop at is. And by remind, we meant he literally pointed it to her. Williams can't get the three. Rogers can't get the follow, and Hollingshed stepped out of bounds. One thing that's not spoken about enough is how Joni Taylor can jump up and down in heels and not break an ankle. <laughs> Well, elite athletes can really do anything at any time. And speaking no of elite <laughs> athletes, Aisha Koulibaly, great execution on the out-of-bounds play for the Aggies. Puckett. Well, heating up now. Rogers doing a great job of probing off of that double on ball screen. Rebound comes out to Strickland. Strickland on the push, and she'll head to the free throw line. Seven of nine shooting. Knocked down a three-pointer, had three rebounds and an assist. Still more basketball to come tomorrow, Monday night. Number one team in the country, South Carolina. If this score holds and Texas A&M wins, that means South Carolina will be the only undefeated team remaining in SEC play. Three undefeateds losing today. Missouri knocking off Vanderbilt. 17 now for Koulibaly. That matches her season high. Jackson back on the floor, backs in on Koulibaly for two. This team is bought into. They want to win. They want to get AM back to where they have been in terms of the national stage. And today they have put on a show, especially with their defense. 
Bowles has to launch it with the shot clock winding down, and that's going to head out of bounds. The foundation was laid, especially late last year, but with these three impact transfers coming in, just a different mindset and different results. Now closing in on a 14-3 and record. Hollingshed at the free throw line, second one to come. So that's at 7 Eastern, and then it's third-ranked Kansas and Oklahoma State, both games here. You gotta believe AM's willing to work the shot clock down here. Just keep taking time off the game clock. Green feeds it to Barker. Beautiful feed and the finish by Barker. Taking advantage of the switch on the screen on the ball. Great roll, great finish by Barker. 18 assists for the Aggies on 27 field goals here today. Inside of three minutes to play. Puckett. Takes it at Barker for two. Rogers works with the Barker screen. That knocks it down for two. Approaching two minutes to go here in the fourth. Eric, I've talked a lot about the defense of AM here today, but to quantify it, to this point in the game, Tennessee being held to 50 points. They came in averaging 79 a game. Tennessee back in action on Thursday. They'll be on the road in Starkville at Mississippi State, then back home next Sunday to host a Vanderbilt team that fell in conference play for the first time today. Nine-game winning streak came to a close at the hands of Mizzou. Rogers is toying with Spear with the ball in her hands. So good at probing Cool, a Bali strong take and the finish. Aisha Cool Bali, just a difficult matchup because she's physically strong. She's explosive off the bounce. You got to have a special talent to match up with her to contain her. Well, there will be no big comeback for Tennessee here today. And as we mentioned, Back home to do some work and then back on the road to take on Mississippi State. Spear inside. She's got 11. a and off this Thursday. Their next game will be Sunday here in this building against South Carolina. Final minute of play. Green working some clock. AM stretched the lead to 19 at one point here in the fourth quarter. Barker. The celebratory reaction for Barker, who struggled from the field all night long. Hollingshed for pocket, and a foul is going to be called on Barker. She's not going to like that. So puck it to the free throw line to shoot a couple for Tennessee. What is your number one takeaway after watching Texas A&M knock off Tennessee here today? Uh, you need to have some pressure releases in order to execute your half-court offense against this A&M defense. And, I mean, they had runs in the LSU game, so I knew this team was capable of it, but they put it together. And I can't say enough about Sahara Jones and what she did offensively. And I'm going to say it again, Lauren Ware is a presence in the paint. It may not show up in terms of points for the Aggies, but she was a presence defensively and altered so many shots. Texas A&M improves to 14-3 and on the season, 2-2 two and two in the SEC. They end Tennessee's six-game winning streak, 71-56 the final.